Thank you, Jed and Danielle, for joining us today. Thanks for um, having us. And thank you, Naomi, for the great introduction as well. So this year has been a, a very big year for the Stellar Development Foundation. Um, and I'm really happy to have you both here as the kind of people that lead this, this foundation together. Um, so before we start, I'd say um, for those of us that only know Bitcoin, maybe, um, can, can you tell us a little bit about the Stellar Protocol? What is, what is it and what's, what's the vision? Sure, yeah. Um, so Stellar was designed originally to um, be sort of an internet level protocol for payments. If you know anything about payments today, it's very fractured and uh, balkanized where there's lots of different financial institutions, payment networks and currencies and they don't interoperate. And Stellar is a way to bridge all of that and make everything interoperable and much more seamless uh, and make money flow a lot, lot easier than it does now. Um, it's, it was, I would say, inspired by Bitcoin and, and blockchains in general. Uh, it has a very different consensus algorithm, so it doesn't rely on mining. Uh, it allows you to store any kind of asset in, inside the network, so dollars, euros, bitcoins, uh, shares of a company, anything like that is natively representable in there, and there's a built-in exchange that can trade these things. So you're able to do uh, lots of things with it, but it's tailored mostly for cross-border payments. Do you have anything to add, Danielle? No, I think it's great. From the standpoint of um, part of what I think Stellar does and does really well is the decentralized, decentralized nature of it. It's allowing people to build on it all over the world, many of whom don't even talk to us first. So the value of this network is that it's actually really um, established and grown. Uh, and there's lots of folks who are out there doing some pretty cool things that we can't even tell you about. Or are you going to tell us today? <laughs> no, we can't tell you about because we don't know. Because they're doing these things without talking to us, which is the, the beauty of what we're supposed to have when you have a decentralized network. Yeah, um, so today is actually um, the six months since you joined uh, the foundation, right? Yeah, it's been a long six months. And um, so, you know, the blockchain industry is very much known for different characters and uh, a lot of craziness and why like why living the, the you know Mozilla and, 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 and coming to this to this industry and why blockchain? Yeah, so I feel like uh, Mozilla, what I did there is I really focused on um, policy work and business work around uh, the internet and the openness and transparency. And some of it we just kind of got wrong uh, on that side of it. And I feel like this on, on the blockchain side, there's an opportunity to take the internet for payments and to really get it right and to engage with regulators and to make this really clear about what it is that we want to do and the value of the technology. So we have an opportunity over here that we didn't actually leverage very well on the, um, I call it the content side of the web. And so I love that. Um, but the six, last six months have been amazing. It is a little bit different in terms of the rules of engagement on um, the blockchain side. Some of the tweets that I receive, I sometimes like wonder if these people know who I am. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just very different, but it's been tons of fun and it's just been a really, uh, it's the team that we've built over the last six months is great and so we just have a lot of momentum to move forward. So what have you, what's the kind of observation, right, with someone coming from outside, um, you know, I think a lot of us have been in space for so long and we're kind of biased mm. to what we know. Um, for someone like you coming from outside, like what have you been observing in the last six months um, and then also what have you been focusing on? So I feel like that this is actually, uh, it's simpler to tell the story than I, I think we've done on, um, on this side. Even just talking about blockchain and what it is, a lot of people hear the word and are like, ah, oh, I don't even want to listen to this anymore. And it's actually really simple when you show them the ledger uh, and you show them how it works. And so these are things like that simplicity, that's how I learned what this, uh, what this side was all about. And then starting from the very base level to understanding the larger piece. So I think that if we could do that and we could bring that kind of um, simplicity and, and yet really talk about the importance of the technology, it's a really good way to do it. Uh, and then I think like what I've been focused on at SDF is really, you know, we have, I have three areas that I look at, organizational development, which is focusing on the org itself and developing that org. We've grown over the last even six months since I've been there from 22 to 54, which is pretty dramatic growth in that short period of time. Um, and then ecosystem development. There's so many audiences out here in the ecosystem that we need to pay attention to from developers and businesses not yet developing, uh, consumers and then policymakers and regulators, so that, and then obviously the product and technology, which Jed is like a deep partner on making sure all of that is, is done right and well. 
So, Jed, you've been in the space for about three months or so, something like that? <laughs> a little bit longer, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe in your perspective, what happened in the last year? Um, what have changed, basically? In this 2017, it was a big, yeah. obviously, hype, and things kind of calmed down in 2019. I think the visitors left, yeah. and a lot of the people that uh, were here originally are still here, and they're coming up with innovative ideas. Um, what, in your perspective, kind of what changed in the last year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone who's been uh, involved in this industry for, for a number of years is, is still waiting for like the first use cases to be built, and it seems like it's taking a long time. And it's, uh, you know, for me personally, it's, it's been frustrating to like, like, obviously there's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement, but where is the actual use by people in the world other than speculation? Uh, which I think is fine, by the way, but, but it would be cool if, if people were doing stuff with beyond that. And so for us, like over the last year, we've really been focusing on what we need to do to make the, the, the first real world uses of it, of, of Stellar. Um, and uh, we've kind of moved away from trying to get other people to build on the platform. I and mean, we still encourage that, but we've realized that we actually need to take a little bit more of an opinionated view and like build the first real applications that people can use on Stellar. Um, and we'll have some announcements about that along those lines shortly, and we're pretty excited about those for sure. So it's funny that you mentioned it because do you see a lot of similarities based on how the Mozilla, your time in Mozilla, and basically what Mozilla have built and, and Stellar in that approach? I, I do. I think that what we need to do is, um, if you look at, you know, at Mozilla, we were building an, an instantiation of the web through the Firefox browser, but it was a platform that we wanted many, many others to build on, and I think that what what SDF and, and focusing on Stellar, what we've done is that platform piece or that um, the notion of the network is really the important piece to get everybody excited about and engaged in. But I think that focusing on an application layer actually demonstrates that where the value can be and how you can do it, especially when you build it from an open source standpoint and you make it so that it's really easy for others to be able to say, okay, we wanna do this too. So I do, we just can't go so far that we're the only ones building the applications. Mm -hmm. The important piece is that there are lots of other parties out there who want to build on it, who want it to be real. That's how you go from, you know, that's how, essentially, that's what Chromium did. So you, you can get lots of other players out there building, and, and it allows it to sustain and have more value in the ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. And I think it actually goes to the questions, which basically, when I speak to developers and investor, and we hear a lot of them say, I'm, I'm building on Stellar, and I always ask why. And like, why Stellar? Why not? Why, why not anything? Why not Bitcoin, right? And a lot of them, they say, uh, because of the speed and the low cost, which is very applicable to payments, right? Um, but do you see anything beyond payments for Stellar coming up in the next decade or so? Or payment is like the, the one thing you want to focus on first before you jump ahead? So I'll say for my part, I think that, you know, we need to focus on what we know how to do well and that's the payments piece for us for now. It doesn't mean that other players out there aren't gonna figure out other things that Stellar does well, but we started this process to be able to, to create uh, an open access to a finan the global financial system, and that's what we're gonna focus on. Um, who knows, like 10 years from now, there might be other amazing things out there, but that's the way I see it. Yeah, I mean, you know, Stellar at its heart is just a distributed database, and so you can do lots of, lots of different things with it. Uh, in our view, I mean, part of the problem here is that you, you need to figure out where to focus your efforts first because all of these cryptocurrency projects or blockchain projects depend on a certain level of network effects to, for them to be useful. And, and if, you, if you're kind of spread around all of everything, you won't ever achieve those. So, so at least from the SDF side of things, we're just very, mo very much focused on cross-border payments because I think that that's where like, the greatest pain is and that's like the first obvious application. But the fact that you can, you can store other assets inside Stellar, like represent you know, shares of stock or shares of real estate, things like that, are, are like, leading other people to build stuff on it that I think is pretty interesting. So potentially maybe some of that stuff takes off sooner than the cross-border payments, but at least from our organization, we're mainly focused on the cross-border mm -hmm. piece. So, so it, for, for those who don't know, um, next week there is um, the Stellar Conference, right? The Meridian, correct? That's right. Um, November 4th, right? Um, and it's going to be in Mexico City. So why didn't you partner with us this year and did it in San Francisco <laughs> and decided to move to Mexico City? It's our first conference. It's pretty cool. We're really excited about it. We have a lot of really great folks attending. Mexico City uh, and just that region and in South America generally and LATAM is really uh, any kind of cross-border transactions and creating really great payment corridors that have ease of use and simplicity for people is really important. And so that region, 
demonstrates like what we're trying to focus on. That's right, yeah. I mean, I, I think um, one of the things that we'll talk about at our conference, but I can allude to it here, is that we're, we're, we're launching this, uh, uh, this sort of um, consumer wallet that's focused in Latin America, so we kind of wanted to make sure that we had a, a presence there, and we're, we're dealing with lots of partners there, so it just made sense to have kind of a more, uh, you know, Latin American-centric event, so. Can you tell us a little bit about what's your vision for that wallet, like what What's the key features in that, or that's something you say for? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it briefly, but but yeah, I mean, at a high level, like it, like where Stellar has always, where we've thought that Stellar always makes the most sense is kind of in the developing world. Like money works fairly well in like U.S. and Europe and places like that, whereas you know, whether as other areas like, for instance, Venezuela, where it's like completely broken, right? So uh, the idea is that if you can make this product work in somewhere that has like the most pain, then, then you can kind of grow out from there. And, um, and so like basically the idea of the wallet is like to help places that are either suffering very high inflation or their currency is just super broken. And, uh, and a lot of places in Latin America fit that profile. Um, so it'll allow people to save in dollars and be able to remit uh, back and forth from the US and other countries in the region, so yeah. Okay. Is there other initiatives within the foundation that are, you can share that you're working on currently or maybe you, and you, you've been working for six months now, what, what's the kind of next, assuming you're gonna be in Stellar in the next few years? Uh, where and I do keep you... suggesting I'm not gonna be there. Uh, the, uh, I plan to be there for the next many years. Um, you know, I think from our standpoint, we really need to, I talk about it as like with a network and to create those network effects, you really need to like, have this like everybody knows they're coming to a party what time they have to show up and what they have to wear and what they got to bring and that's sort of how you have to create that network and so we really need to have hyper focus on bringing like the what we call anchors the financial institutions that can have the fiat on and off that can actually create not just ability for the wallet to be um, the, the wallet that we're the judge just talked about being something that is useful but also for everybody else who's using stellar as um, part of their work for that to be useful to them as well. So really creating like what are the focus areas from us from a business standpoint that we see holes in the network that we need to fill by engaging with parties out there. But then I think another really important piece of this is that we need to create some stability in the space because of, through legislation and to get legislators not just domestically but also all over the world really to understand um, what blockchain is, not just stellar blockchain, but blockchain generally, what the value of it is, and why it's something they shouldn't be afraid of. And so I spent a lot of time here in DC and also talking to regulators elsewhere so that we can actually help to facilitate those discussions from an education standpoint, um, because a rising tide floats all boats. And so here we go, let's try to make this all happen for all of us. And so we'll spend time doing that, more time than we have before. Yeah, I mean, so you mentioned on the onboarding and offboarding, what of fiat to, to crypto. From maybe for you, Jed, from a technical perspective, is that a technical issue, or you think it's more like a regulation uh, uh, issue, really? Yeah, I mean, the, the onboarding, like fiat, uh, like on and off, is is. I mean, technically, that was solved a long time ago. That was like kind of the whole thesis of of making Stellar, and it's a very simple process, just tokenizing anything, like dollars or pesos or whatever. Um, yeah, a lot of that is around, like you know like essentially business development, like getting partners to understand like why they, why it's a benefit to them to, to issue these things. It's, it's interesting that now the world is kind of taken by this like stable coin idea mm -hmm. when this was kind of the, the whole like, the reason that Star was made in the first place is that I think it's important for people to be able to tokenize what they're used to, not just have like some new internet form of money like Bitcoin or something like that, but, but actually have like a digital dollar or a digital, you know, euro and they can, they can have kind of the same, somewhat of the same like uh you know characteristics of, of things like bitcoin or, or lumens or things like that right so um so that piece is important and but as far as like the actually getting these anchors on board it's a lot of like business development and then there's a lot of like getting people comfortable with like the regulatory regime of the whole thing so yeah. and i think the other part that um, from an integration standpoint and one of the things that i think we've gotten particularly good at over the last few months is the documentation of it, so that it's actually much simpler for folks to do it without a lot of support from the foundation. We're happy to be there to support, but part of this, like making this whole system work and really growing that network is making it so that people can do it on their own. So like the one to, the one to many instead of one to one. So, I mean, in terms of, um, like, like we mentioned, make it easy to use, right? Both on the consumer side, but also on the developer side. Um, can you share a little bit, Jed, maybe um, some tools? That we have a lot of technical people here. Um, tools that um, you guys built to make it really easy to integrate with Stellar? 
for sure. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously, everything we do is for almost, I would say, 99% of the stuff we do is open source, so everything is available. Uh, we've built a lot of tools that are on the anchor side where if you are what we call an anchor, and this is just a financial institution that wants to like tokenize something and put it on the network, we've built tools for the anchors to kind of uh, go through and make sure that they're following the, the right like ecosystem level protocol so they can see that it'll like interoperate with other wallets out there or other anchors out there. Um, and uh, so that's been really nice. So it's very easy for people to spin up and get started with this stuff. It shouldn't take like months of development. It should take like on the order of days to like to get your thing integrated. Um, and uh, let's see, we, we also make it very easy to spin up Stellar Core, which is the, the actual validator of the network. Uh, there's a lot of tools around that with like monitoring and things like that. Um, we're like constantly have this effort to improve the docs and like make things uh, like developer friendly. That's like always a big focus of ours, so yeah. Do you think that building these tools, it makes it easier to build the developer community around? The product and, and maybe a little bit more like what is your like what is your vision of how to build this developer community? Yeah, I think it's the most important thing. I think just coming even from Mozilla, like we spend a lot of time focusing on the open source community, and we need to do that here too. And I think that we have folks who that's their sole job is to not only respond to the lots of questions that come in from developers, but also to write material in a way that's helpful to the developer. It's the one way that, like I said, you do the one-to-many. Uh, if you're constantly having to do the one-to-one, -one, you lose sight of the fact that you're trying to build a network that's global. And it needs to be all over the world that people can access this material and build on it. And so that's a really important piece. Yeah. I mean, I think we did a lot of things when we were starting out. I mean, obviously, we like, looked at everything else that was out there and tried to improve on, on the situation. And I think, I think we're still the only at least public chain that I know of that writes the state of the world, for instance, to a database, right? Which is a, a normal developer can come up and like do SQL calls and like figure out what's going on. And, and there's, you know, a nice API that we've made for the network rather than, than having to go and like call directly into whatever the daemon is, right? So things like that just make it like easier to develop against and, and make it for a much happier experience. So, mm. yeah. Can you maybe share a little bit some lessons that you learned from Mozilla on how you uh, approach building communities? Because I'm sure we have a lot of uh, a lot of people here that build protocols or want to build products, and um, the community is, is like a, the network effect, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, what what have you done back then that um, ha people haven't applied yet? In well, your opinion, I don't know if people haven't applied it yet, but I'll tell you that I think we get it wrong when we say that we have a community. I think it's really important to always recognize that there's so much diversity within a community. Uh, the larger community that you have many different communities within it and you have to make sure that you're speaking to each of them and you have to understand what it is that they need and so it really is a lot of just understanding who's building and who's participating because it's not a one-size-fit-all uh, so I think that's the one lesson that we it took us a while at Mozilla, Mozilla, uh, to, Mozilla to learn that we often talked about it just as a single community and it really wasn't. And once we learned that, we were able to like, engage more deeply on the issues that each section of the community might care about. Mm -hmm. So I think we've tried to do that here by looking at um, our community just from the standpoint of like what we have anchors that are developers in the community and there's certain things that they care about and certain education pieces that they need. We also have folks who are building different, um, different types of products on the network and so we need to think about it like that too. And then we have just community that really cares about Stellar and maybe not be building on it, but just cares about it. And we need to feed that too. And so that's, I think, the community building aspect is to be very holistic in how you approach it. That's interesting. Um, so I was thinking, Jed, I mean, you don't, you don't, I guess you don't speak too much publicly, right? Um, so I appreciate you coming here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and wh what was your original vision for Stellar? Why, why did you even? Yeah. With it originally. So yeah. So I mean, uh, so I learned about blockchain fairly early, like uh, in like 2010, I think, and I thought the idea was like extremely compelling. And then as I kind of learned more about how payments work in the world, I just realized how broken it is, and like how how very much it's not like the internet. And and if you kind of like think about what the internet did uh, for information, it just allowed people to all over the world to access this stuff. And no longer were there's this like series of gatekeepers, like you'd have to go, like pre-internet, you'd have to go, like if you wanted to get information out there, you'd have to have a book publisher or a recording label or something like that. But like post the internet, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just put it up and, and get stuff. So it just very much leveled the playing field for like consumption and production of information. And something like Stellar does that for economic activity, which like arguably could be more uh, impactful, where it's like now 
how someone anywhere in the world can like put out something and like get 50 cents or whatever from somebody else in the world. And I think it'll just lead to all this like innovation that we, we don't anticipate. Like the creators of the internet didn't anticipate things like, you know, Wikipedia or Airbnb and all these like cool innovations that came across on top of it. And I, I think we, we'll see the same thing here is like once there is like this actual internet of payments established and it is this like open system that anyone can send to anyone and, and it's just much less friction than there is today. Uh, I, I think there'll just be like a host of innovations and, and it'll be really powerful. Yeah. Do you think crypto is enough by itself to create that use case or do you, do you think there's going to be a convergence of multiple technologies that kind of come together, right? With like Uber wouldn't exist without the iPhone, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, you think crypto is enough or do we need to create a new interface to use crypto in order to create a distribution that makes sense, right? Yeah, I, I, I think, I think I think crypto's enough. I think that the challenge is just how you get there. Like, I think when you explain the ultimate vision to people, they're, they're always really like it, but what is the path? Like, like how, how do you get people, how do you get this network established? Because before there's a network there, there's really no reason for anybody else to get on. And, and, and I think that's been the challenge for adoption for all crypto projects and all blockchain projects is that they're, they're, that network is really hard to get started. I think we have a, a really good plan for it now at Stellar with, you know, we have like some concrete things that we think can get there. Um, so I'm excited if we can, because like once you get it started and once you have one region that's actually working, it's just very easy to grow out from there because it is organic. Like since it's, everything is permissionless and open, people can just start adding on and that makes the network more and more compelling. So it should snowball once you can just get it over the, like, the tipping point. I do think though in this, in this space, it's actually more important to strive for simplicity of discussion because when you just said like crypto, I think when people think crypto, they go to a different space and they get like, oh, they get concerned about it. Not, I think part of what we need to do is sort of change the conversation into what good can this bring to the world and what, so what problems can we help to solve by using blockchain by, blockchain, by using the technology that layers underneath it. But like the crypto word actually in and of itself creates like this momentum of thought that we need to sort of pull back on a little bit. But I do think it's a pretty cool thing uh, just all the different, it's not just our project, like I love what we're doing, I think our, our, it's pretty amazing and remarkable, but the potential for interoperability for all of these things brings a whole world of opportunity together that we can't yet see. I mean, you just look at how they're using blockchain potentially in other countries, even for identification, just to really help solve some problems. Like, there's a lot of really good things that we can do with this, and so I just think that we are at the, like, we're at the very beginning of the climb for this really big hill, and I think that when we get to the top, we're gonna look down and go, wow, we never even anticipated these things were gonna happen. Yeah, yeah I agree, I do agree that the utility is gonna come from the places that they actually need it. Yeah, um, and I think we lose sight of that, and we often talk about like how cool something is, but let's talk about what it actually does to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're running a bit out of time. I can ask another five questions, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, thank you for coming. Um, again, if anybody interested in meeting them, they'll probably be around for, for a bit. So yeah, thank yeah, you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.